Hello friends, I hope you're all well. This time, I'm bringing you some very important information about a topic that's generating quite a bit of buzz. The Global Pandemic Treaty, which was approved on April 20th by 190 countries. The only exceptions have been Argentina, the United States, and Liechtenstein. Remember that both the United States and Argentina have either withdrawn from or left the World Health Organization, WHO. And in the case of Liechtenstein, this small microstate does not belong to the WHO, although it has been a member of the UN since 1990. And of course, being a country with limited resources, it often goes its own way. But now, let's head to the really important stuff. As longtime followers of the channel will know, about a year and a half ago, I published a video titled, Trump and the Prophecy? Trump already elected in 2025? Pandemic from 2025 to 2028? Extraterrestrial revelation in 2029? That video was censored by YouTube, among other things, because I mentioned how the modus operandi described in an official document closely resembled what we experienced during the 2020 health crisis. I had to re-upload it, edit it, but if you want to see the full version, it's available on Patreon and Facebook. Today, I'm going to take a closer look at that topic. Because yes, that document exists and is called SPARS Pandemic Scenario 2025 to 2028. Remember that this SPARS simulation was conducted in 2017. October 2025, a new virus called SPARS-CoV begins circulating in the Philippines. It's a highly contagious respiratory virus. In a short time, it reaches the United States. The first cases are detected among university students in Minnesota. Some downplay it, others exaggerate it. The population doesn't know what to believe. Theories are already emerging on social media. The virus was created in a laboratory. This is a global control trial. Fear begins to mix with misinformation. December 2025, the number of infected people rises exponentially. The U.S. president declares a national emergency. Officials try to reassure the population, but the messages are confusing, unclear, and often contradictory. Meanwhile, pharmaceutical companies spring into action. A global race begins to develop a vaccine. In July 2026, the Corovax vaccine, developed by the pharmaceutical company GMI, is approved under emergency conditions. But there's a big problem. No long-term studies were conducted. It was approved without a clear understanding of its side effects. And what was feared is happening. Serious adverse effects begin to appear, especially in children. Seizures, brain swelling, and neurological damage. Authorities downplay the situation. The benefits outweigh the risks. These are extremely rare effects. But public confidence plummets. Outrage erupts, parents demand justice, massive lawsuits emerge, and alternative media begins to reveal connections between officials and pharmaceutical companies. On social media, the battle intensifies. Society is divided. Those who trust science and those who accuse it of a cover-up. Vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Official truth versus public suspicion. And in the midst of all this, the government tries to calm the crisis. But it's too late. By mid-2027, infections will decline. The vaccine worked, yes, but the social and political damage was enormous. Public health was discredited, trust was shattered, and the consequences go beyond health. In 2028, the simulation ends. And these are the key lessons its authors left behind. One, communication matters as much as medicine. If people don't trust, they won't obey. Two, hiding information for the common good is a recipe for chaos. Three, social media can be allies or enemies. It all depends on who controls them. This document was prepared by the Johns Hopkins University Center for Health Security, the same center that participated in Event 201, another pandemic simulation. It wasn't secret. It wasn't a conspiracy. It was a preparation exercise that seems to have predicted the future. But SPARS hasn't been the only simulation that has generated debate. On October 23rd, 2022, an exercise called Catastrophic Contagion was held, organized again by the Johns Hopkins University Center for Health Security, in collaboration with the WHO and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This simulation presents a scenario in which a new respiratory virus, called Sears, emerges in South America and spreads rapidly 
causing a mortality rate much higher than that of COVID-19, especially among children and young people. Former heads of state, health ministers, and high-level officials from different countries participated in the exercise, simulating key decisions to curb the spread of the virus, manage social panic, and control misinformation online. I would like to highlight two important points that both simulations share. One, the inclusion of religious leaders in official communications. According to the simulations, public trust is strengthened when political, scientific, and religious leaders are aligned. But here I pause for a moment because sadly, many religions are subject to or greatly influenced by political power. None firmly defended the freedom of conscience of their followers during the 2020 to 2021 crisis. For example, although the Seventh-day Adventist institution recommended that its followers take the vaccine and aligned itself with the official narrative, there were dissenting voices within the same religious community. I highlight three cases. Pastor Conrad Vine, who criticized the Seventh-day Adventist General Conference for not defending the freedom of conscience of its followers. Pastor Walter Veith, who has not yet openly opposed people receiving these products, instead urging everyone to make their own decision and follow the dictates of their conscience. Pastor David Gates, Gospel Ministries. I'm not an Adventist, but I deeply value the respect for freedom of conscience they preached. And I feel deep in my heart that what we experienced was a preliminary test of what will come in the future when the mark of the beast is imposed. Two, the mass death of children and young people. Both simulations take place in 2025 and coincide with the fact that the most affected population is the youngest. Although SPARS doesn't provide exact death tolls, catastrophic contagion does. 1 billion infections, 20 million deaths, including 15 million children, and millions more with paralysis or brain damage. It also highlights that trust in the healthcare system and political leaders is drastically eroding. What's disturbing, once again, is the similarity of these simulations to what happened or is happening. I don't know if you know, but not long ago, in December 2024, the United Kingdom purchased 5 million doses of products to combat H5N1 avian flu, in case cases of human-to-human -human transmission began. Those who follow the channel should know that cases have been detected in some chickens in the United States. So some of them have had to be euthanized to prevent the virus from spreading. This has led to a significant increase in the price of eggs for some time now. On the other hand, if the pandemic begins in October 2025, as the SPAR simulation exercise suggests, it would coincide with what blogger Finanzas underscore times has been commenting on for several months. Preventive fiction or a dress rehearsal? So the question is, was SPARS an educational simulation or a plan that was executed step by step and catastrophic contagion? Another coincidence or a warning? In the new global pandemic treaty, signed by almost every country in the world in 2025 will be the next step in this story you decide what to believe leave your opinion in the comments if you'd like you can contribute through patreon paypal or cryptocurrency in the description of this video don't forget to like and share this video if you found it interesting and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already see you in the next video may god bless